We always say it's the space between the notes that makes the music. That is the faint game. All right, guys, we're back. Eric Nixick back in the building. Well, in his building. We're gonna go ahead and do head movement into takedowns. Is that Perfect. correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chris Curtis. Hi. Middleweight, handsome guy. Allow him to get off like this. Oh. Boom. He's ranked, what, 14? Something like that. 14 no, in the world. Yeah, fighting like January 20th. Now, again, remember your athlete. Know your athlete, know what he is, know, who, know what he's great at. Chris is always so good when his shoulders are in motion, or his hands are in motion, and a lot of that really comes from his hips and his head movement. So first drill we'll always kind of try to do is a simple one out of the open stance. He's just gonna hit his jab. He's gonna hit an alley cross. So I'll throw my jab at him. He's off center line. He's aiming for my heart. So alley cross to the heart. The reason why we like to aim for the heart is because it's center mass. You can't slip this. If I'm throwing across and he's throwing across, he might thread the needle. We might miss both sides, right? But for him, if he aims for my heart on this first attempt, he's landing center mass. That's what we want to do. It starts to open up a lot of our other series. We can go one alley cross to his gallop step. We'll throw another overhand. One alley, gallop step, and will rip an overhand. Because he landed center mass, he knows where I'm at, his feet come, he goes to the overhand. With that being said, if we can land that overhand out of the open stance, we hit that knee tap. So we go jab alley, reloads, here comes the knee tap right behind it, fit in, take down right off of it. Nice setup, especially off of open stance. Now, if he wants to run what we call the drive-by or the Frankie, he hits his jab, hits his alley cross, reloads and hits the same side chest again and runs that knee tap right off that same side chest. So two different variants, one is off the cross, the other is off the overhand. Now when we get backed up to the barrier, like we talked about, again, he's trying to funnel me into the corner post. When you get to the barrier, you always want to make sure that you put in the mind of the fighter, or the athlete, the level change. Faint level change ahead to collect data on what they do with their defense. So before the combination even starts, Chris will throw a level change. What did my hands do? They dropped. I bit on the level change. So Chris is going to start with the same sequence. He's just going to hit a one alley, level change, overhand. Bang. The reason why is because I showed him in the first sequence, I'm worried about the wrestling. The level change, the faint between is the most important part. We always say it's the space between the notes that makes the music. That is the faint game. So no matter what you're doing, you're hitting pads, you're doing this, you're doing that. This should be on the artist, the fighter, is his faint game. He'll set a faint up. He'll hit a one alley, he'll reload, there's your overhand, there's your fit in. Now, on the fit in portion of this, we always talk about no two part takedowns. What do I mean by that? When Chris penetrates and he gets inside, don't stop your feet. Don't stop running. Don't allow this guy to get heavy and get his base, get his feet planted, get his underhooks, get his overhooks. When Chris goes, he goes. We hit this takedown, bang, and now we're wrestling. He's lifting, he's going. We say that all the time, guys. No two-part takedowns. When you penetrate, we pull, we lift. When we penetrate, we go, we run through that takedown. No two-part takedowns, hit that continuation, get him to the ground, elevate, get your ground a pound on, go win those fights. Yeah, I did like that, because a lot of people kind of stay there. Yeah. And they're just not going. They get comfortable being on the inside, yeah. and then now it's a game. Randy always talked about using the carom mm -hmm. off the cage, especially ah, when you penetrate. Yeah. yeah, so you penetrate on the double, uh -huh. and then that carom pulling uh, and ripping off that carom. That makes sense. So yeah. when Randy would always talk about kind of slingshotting them off that cage, mm -hmm. boom, boom, boom and big, big pull, pull lift. James Krause always had a great series keeping them pinned to the cage, right? Mm -hmm. You have an inanimate object that's keeping them trapped. Sure. Some guys like to take them off the cage so they can't use the wall to get up. Yep, it yep, kind yep, of fits yep. your whatever your style or demographic is, or your yep. ideology for the fight, right? Sure. Us personally, pin them to the cage. So like, it really does depend too as well. Like if it, you know, you want your head, if his head's pinned against the cage, you can't do anything. Exactly. You can't wall, exactly. you can't walk, you can't do anything. I just gotta cover hips. Yep. I gotta follow hips, cover yep. hips. But we're a big, big half guard gym here. Sure. Well, I don't even call it half guard, I call it half mount. He's all laughing, you know this real. You know, Randy, Randy's always instilled that in us. It's not sure. half guard, it's half mount. We have a leg pinned, we have it isolated, and I think now that the game has grown and evolved, you're starting to see that more and more. I think, I think a lot of people prefer that. 100%. Especially the top game. 100%. You know I mean? I'm killing yeah. your bottom leg, yeah. and now we can be offensive. For sure. Whereas a lot of the get-ups, especially when you see in the heavyweight division, is mm -hmm. what? Belly down, build up.
up a base, mm -hmm. both legs are free, mm -hmm. then they can start wrestling. The Derek Lewis classic get up. Yeah. You didn't show it this last fight, but. Oh man. <laughs> How many days a week you really want to work this? So let's say for instance, this is something that they want to put in their game for the fight. Drill it every day. Yep. If you're in camp right now and you have specifics, don't stress about it now. But when you're outside of camp, that's the place that you're supposed to be building new tools and adding new things. Bro, you nailed it. Yep. Jump on YouTube, you know, invest in the dynamic striking, get yep. BJJ fanatics, do all those little things to where even if you pick up one little detail, grow, man. There's so much information out there. Before when you and I were coming up, you had to like buy DVD series yep. and you had to do this. Yep. And now you can just jump on the internet and find great content, great sure. things, and maybe help you change your game just you know a little bit. And that can be the difference between wins and losses. Speaking of that, YouTube channel and Instagram, where can they find you? Eric underscore XC MMA. All my channels are the same. Do you want to you know punch out the camera? Go ahead and do it. Just Go high, low, faint. Bang! I was like, no, my camera, <laughs> not my camera, man. <laughs>